Boxing King Media in association with Boxer with me, promoter Eddie Hen. Eddie, um, quite fiery age at the yeah, end there. I liked it. I mean, you know, the, the danger always is, as we saw in the Ruiz fight, everything's too friendly, friendly. Like, and there's so many similarities. The emotion of AJ v Miller, the emotion of AJ against White, the late replacement, Deontay Wilder next. So it's just like, you've got to be up for it. You've got to be firing. And I liked what I saw up there. You were in the midst of it, in, right in the middle. What was said? Because AJ, it looked like Helena said something to wind AJ up and AJ had to kind of tell him to kind of relax. Yeah, but they were staring at each other and when they faced the front, as Hellenius turned to face the front, he wouldn't take his eyes off him, do you know what I mean? And AJ just said to him, you got a problem? And Hellenius was like, no. And he went, good. But he still wouldn't face the front, do you know what I mean? So AJ just said to him, look, you know all this stuff, yeah, it means nothing, unless you want to fight right now. And I just went, oh no. And he didn't say anything, Hellenius. So he said, so do you want to fight me now? And, but Hellenius wouldn't like, he, he, and then he said, you fight me now or you want to stay cool? Your choice. And he went, I stay cool. And I thought, thank fuck for that. So, but I, you know, I've never really seen that from him before, but it's good because he needs to be fired up for this fight. Let's say it as it is, it is a must win. Joshua yeah, cannot yeah. lose, uh, but how important is the performance as well? Just, I mean, obviously to people and the critics, but for me, just win. Like, you know, it's been a horrible week we've been here before like I just want to see him but I, I do want to see him perform because I think he's worked hard in this camp to perform and I do think we get a great performance room tomorrow night fingers crossed uh, moving away I'm sure you saw your good pal Simon Jordan's yeah. podcast with uh, Frank Warren we look forward to your podcast with Simon Jordan oh, yeah. hopefully in the near future definitely be a similar conversation yeah. um, what did you take from it I haven't seen it honestly I saw I had a few questions on it yesterday um, it's very pally pat like, those guys talk socially, do you know what I mean? It's a, di it's a, it's a different energy. But I, I'm comfortable speaking to Simon Jordan. I wouldn't be comfortable speaking to Simon Jordan about the mobile phone industry, which he, you know, he was a player in, or football transfers, which he knows much more than me about, but he could never know a hundredth of what I know about boxing and the industry. So it doesn't. it's easy for me to sit there and, and debate with him, and so far, so good. Something that Frank said yesterday was regarding um, Tyson Fury's legacy. Does, yeah. does he need anti Joshua to be part of his legacy? And, and he answered, and I'm paraphrasing here, um, no. Yeah. I think, like, it depends how you want to be remembered. Do you know what I mean? If you want to be a general, generational great that beat all top heavyweights, yes. I mean, if he beats Usyk, he goes down as a generational great. But if he beats, yeah, even if you don't particularly rate AJ, you have to say he's top five heavyweight in the world, right? So if you're talking about a guy who beat everybody, you've got to go through the top five. I think AJ right now is number three heavyweight in the world on paper. Four if you put Wilder in front of him. But So you've got to go through those guys. And at the moment, when you look at the top five in the heavyweight division, all he's beaten is Deontay Wilder. And that's it. So we know he beat Vladimir Klitschko. But he hasn't beat Usyk, he hasn't beat AJ, and those fights are there for him, but it all depends what he wants his legacy to be. He could be and could go down as one of the greatest ever, but it's right there for him to do. But in this game now, sometimes it seems to be more about the money, and that comes from the fighter, trust me, at that level. The fighters call all the shots. They take advice and they'll listen, but they decide. And he decided not to fight Alexander Uzi. I don't even blame Frank Warren. And once that deal fell through, they had to come up with something else. And what they came up with was Francis Ngannou. And I don't blame them. They're getting probably 30 million for a walk in the park. It's like it's great business. But don't talk about legacy and don't talk about he's a middleweight and he's this and that. They know how good Usyk is. And they would only fight him for a certain price. And that's why they didn't fight him. Eddie, you said there's a, a, a deal in principle with the Saudis. So getting this done and over the line contractually isn't going to take a long time well, we hope so I mean we have been talking for a long time but it does take time in the Middle East to, to get the deal done but we've worked with these people before we know they want the fight they love Anthony Joshua and they're flying in to hopefully see AJ win and then hopefully close the deal and Shelley Finkel messaged me last night with a good luck you know and I replied the, the prayer emoji he replied the fingers crossed emoji and that's how we feel you know we just want to get get through uh, tomorrow night what's the ideal plan for AJ next three fights simple Robert Hellenius, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury. That's it. Not, not, not interested in anything else. And 
you know, people might think that's adventurous or we might think we're deluded, but let's get through tomorrow and then deal with number two. Conor McGregor in uh, in audience yes, yes. tomorrow night. Yeah. Friendship's growing. Yeah, we get on well. Like, you know, I mean, I'm a fan of Conor McGregor because I think he's an unbelievable character and he's a great MMA fighter. I'm also a fan of his products and his business and I think they're going really well. Even more of a fan that they sponsor our events, obviously. But always good having him in part of the promotion, always good having his energy in the arena. And I'm sure he'll be nice and lively tomorrow night. Ed, with, with losing Canelo to PBC for the next three fights at least, Anthony Joshua, let's in the most respectful way, at the tail end of his career, what are kind of the plans for Matthew Mendes Zone to kind of ensure that you've got superstars that are going to be get close to that Joshua Canelo level? Yeah, I mean, you don't just create and don't, superstars like AJ and Canelo don't come around very often. So we've got a tremendous stable. You know, we're continuing our growth globally. Um, our schedule is better than anybody's schedule, uh, particularly in the UK and obviously globally. Um, and I don't know the official deal of, of Canelo Alvarez, but I'm sure he'll be back at some point. Um, AJ is massive for us and we need to see him win tomorrow night. That would be a big blow. Um, but our schedule is second to none and keep growing boxing globally. Obviously, looks like Devin Haney's returning to the zone as well, which will be fantastic and matchroom. And we've got to make the big fights over in the States as well as the UK. I'm not, I'm not saying there's a rift between yourself and Dylan White, but Fabio Ward is managed by Dylan White. Yeah. Purse bids get postponed for a month. It looks like Fabio might go and try and do a deal on his own, put Matchroom on the side for now. From our side, can you see how we've seen the picture? I spoke to Fabio and he made me aware of the situation, which is he's had a one fight offer from Queensbury to do that fight. Um, if we don't make the same offer, or you know, close to bid at purse bids, he should probably take that. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, he is managed by Dillian White. That relationship is probably not at the best at the moment, but you know, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. And whatever's the best for Fabio is great for us. Go and beat David Adelaide, and then we'll we'll carry on or see what happens. I'd like him to get home advantage. He's a champion, and whatever way you look at it, Queensbury love David Adelaide. He's going to be up against it. But if it's a massive number, which it is. Maybe that's the right thing to do. Final one uh, on Dylan White. It seems a bit bizarre that obviously, you, yes, he hasn't been contracted to, but you've always had a good relationship, a close relationship. He's fought majority of his career on Matchroom. I haven't heard you speak about a phone call with Dylan directly or communication directly. Why is that? Because I haven't got that kind of relationship with him anymore. Ever. We 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 would we've never spoken on the phone individually. Do you know what I mean? It's always been through his management team, who are very, very hands-on. So in this instance, with something so serious, you really need to be speaking to the people who are guiding his business and his career, not just Dillian White. I would have had no problem Dillian White being on the call, but every time I speak to Dillian White, I get a call from his manager, Jay, and then they'll patch him in to the call. So when I got a call this time, they never patched him in. So it's not like... We speak. I, I love Dillian. I respect him. We've had done great business together, and I will support him on this as well. And I, you know, my gut feeling was always that it doesn't make sense, but it's happened, and it's serious, and it's got to be dealt with. Um, and I haven't always seen eye to eye with his management team, but we've always got there in the end. But this is a massive blow to him. I mean, it could be career-ending, and hopefully, he can get get it dealt with. Eddie, thank you for speaking to Boxing yeah. King Media.